Hello everyone. So today's another um, Unity game engine um, optimization technique for your projects. And uh, we're going to talk about LODs or level of details. So I'm going to bring up a picture here to kind of illustrate what a level of detail could look like. Right? So there's three levels of detail here. And uh, honestly, on this picture here, I probably would have had a fourth that was even more broken down than this third one here, like a little more than a cube or a box. So your highest LOD here would be the LOD zero, and on this, in this case, it's uh, 2,500 polys. It's really high res, right? It's whatever's going to be really close to the camera. So in a first-person game, you know, first-person shooter or something like that, your LOD zero is going to be the thing that's sitting on the table right in front of you. It's going to be, well, the gun in your hand. It's uh, it's going to be things that are really close, and then these lower LODs, LOD one, LOD two, and three. Those are going to be like the weapons in an AI's hand who's in the distance, or a building that you see on the horizon. Um, and so the advantage and why it's an optimization technique is the level of details will swap out and only show the resolution of model based on the distance from the player's camera. So if you're really close, the models are going to be these LOD zeros, and it's going to process um, however many vertices this is, 2,500 polys, you know, um, I don't know the mathematics for it, but eight or nine thousand vertices processed every frame for this one model. And then as the camera comes back, why do we need to process that many vertices or polys? We don't. So now we're going to only process 632. So it takes a load off of the processing per frame in your game. So let's look in Unity at how LODs are done. I had a previous tutorial that had a pretty cool script that swapped out LODs based on distance, but Unity has opened up the uh, pro features of LOD groups here in uh, you know in Unity now so everyone has access to this so why not just use what the system that Unity's built in so what I have here is just a little project here and uh, I will create a Unity package file for this and in the video description there will be a download link so that you can literally download um, all of the things in this demo here so you can just play with it on your own and it's actually going to include this pretty cool hot rod. Um, so I have three LOD levels for this car. Um, I'm just going to pull them into the scene, okay, and then um, I'll take the highest resolution LOD and snap it over there. We'll keep the mid one in the middle, and then we'll keep the lowest over here. So with the wireframes on, you can see that this is the detailed vehicle, right? Oh, by the way, these are mobile resolution, so these cars, so they're they're really optimized and low poly right and then in the wireframe on this car you can see it's got a little less detail and then on this car it's got quite a bit uh, less detail which is not going to matter you're not going to see any visual difference in game so let me um, let's delete the ones I spread out and so when you want to set up an LOD group in unity you just drag in all of your LODs right and they should ideally sit directly on top of each other. I shouldn't be able to see any difference. I just dragged three different models in here and I can't see um, the silhouette. I'm going to take the wireframe off. It looks as if there's one car model on there and that tells you there that you've done your LODs well. Um, if you can't see any major silhouette or shape changes. So this is our highest, this is the next, and this is the lowest. So what we want to do now is let's just create a prefab or a container to house all of these LODs, an LOD group. I'm going to right click on this little gear over here and do this shortcut for reset position and zero it out. And I'm going to call this classic street rod LOD group. That's fine. And then what I'm going to do is just shift select all of them and drag them into it. Okay. And then, if you want to make the prefab out of it, just drag it over into your project window, and it instantly becomes a prefab. Okay, so all of our LD LODs are now, um, and I'm actually going to remove this animator. Um, you can go into the model settings over here, and uncheck that, and hit apply, um, and that'll take the animators off. Okay, so all of my LODs are under an empty root node. Um, so at this point, we can go add component and uh, I had typed it in earlier so you just type in LOD group and there it is it has added um, we're gonna pull this out of the way for right now it's added the LOD group and you should be able to see this in your editor uh, scene window here okay and as I zoom out you're gonna see the uh, this little informative window here kind of let you know oh I'm at LOD 1 
so the settings are a little off, right? We have to tweak it, no problem. So what you do in here is you look at your LOD group, it automatically calculated all the bounds and everything, so that's fine, we don't need to mess with that. And what we can do is click our highest resolution LOD, and uh, I did an important thing ahead of time that you'll want to do when you're making your LOD models is append a uh, you know a suffix to the end or a prefix or something to your file name on it on the FBX that says this is the LOD zero this is the LOD one so you know which LODs are which so I know you can just drag it into there and it adds everything it adds the chassis and all the wheels and all the parts that are separated now on this car the wheels are separated so that in code you could rotate them or whatever so LOD zero is assigned LOD one we want to drag in it's all assigned, and then LOD2. We, uh, oh, no, that's overwriting LOD1. LOD2. Oh, did I glitch the system? Let's see. Let's remove that just in case. Or you could do it this way, but I prefer to do it that way. Okay. And LOD1, I'll drag it up here in the top little color box. Seems to be a bit safer. All right, so now we have proper assignments. So as I'm close to the car, um, and you, when you have the root LOD group node selected, you'll see the readout says, this is your highest resolution model right here, LOD zero. As the camera zooms out, we swap to LOD one, we swap to LOD two, and then at a certain distance, you'll see cold, which means it's removed from the scene. All right. <clears throat> So the cool thing is, is if you've done your LODs well, as you zoom in and transfer between them, you shouldn't see really massive pops. You shouldn't see the lighting or geometry or anything pop really bad. These LODs are really well done, so it's just a very minor, um, just snap, you know, very small. And you also have to understand in game, these things will appear smaller and stuff. The other thing Unity puts in here is a fade mode which is really cool. You can use this crossfade and it'll actually help resolve uh, that pop. So if you watch it now, this is the LOD zero and I'm gonna not select it so you can see the model just doing it. And look, it's swapping, but it's doing a really nice smooth fade um, between. And that's really, it's really cool. So the other thing you wanna do too is depending on your game, you wanna go ahead and tweak the distances that the LODs swap out now. So this is fine that LOD0 shows all the way up to here. Um, I'd like it probably to show... Well, that's good. LOD1's good. LOD2... I'd say we could probably swap a little soon. Uh, we could swap a little sooner. So what you do is you see the difference lines here in between the colors. You just drag it and it'll show you so now we swap to LOD2 a little sooner right if you wanted to keep your higher resolution mesh a little further in the distance drag it to the right but I want to switch to LOD2 pretty quick because that says hey let's go to that lower poly model sooner and the game will run a little faster right now if I pull the culling all the way up you'll see the model disappears and gets culled out way too early so this is really tricky this culling one you usually want to cull it really far in the distance two three percent something like that so it doesn't disappear until it's way out there in fact it's so far out there that you can hide the fact that it disappears with fog or you can hide it with usually where a sky dome or a sky box if you're doing like a mobile game um, the sky box could be geometry like a dome and you could actually pass the car through that and it could use the dome to hide the cars pop out um, we did that on the need for speed games so the car could like blend through the sky box and kind of disappear on the outside of it. Um, but we just have it call out so far away that you probably won't even notice. And it, now that you know what these LOD groups are all about, if you didn't know what they were, you can look for this and see this happening in a lot of games, like the Assassin's Creed games, um, all of the, uh, you know, like Far Cry and stuff like that. And the Battlefield games, they rely heavily on LODs to uh, make this stuff work and uh, function. Another cool thing is you can add your own LOD group too. So I'm just going to insert before in here and I've inserted uh, this insert before. You can delete an LOD level too. And I'm going to insert an LOD um, 3. <coughs> so and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say wow 
that is literally the size of probably on screen two pixels one pixel so when it gets that far out maybe like this far out it could literally switch to a cube <clears throat> oh, why did we lose um, just drag it back in if you lost it for some reason I don't know when I added that one it seemed to have lost it um, you know in the need for speed games we literally the furthest out LODs like when the cars the AI cars are all on the horizon they are literally cubes uh, anyway that's a neat little trick if you ever like you like playing the need for speed games and stuff um, they're literally like just barely more than a cube so just size your cube as close as you want to the car it doesn't need any physics materials on it and then just go in and what we always did was you just put your it doesn't matter you can UV it if you want to make a cube in your modeling app which is what we did and then map the UVs to kind of represent the side of the car I'm not worried about it here because this is just a hasty example for this demo and I'm gonna call it LOD 3 and this is like the extreme uh, distance um, so let's see what that looks like <clears throat> it looks like it swaps way too soon <laughs> okay so let's make that way smaller let's call at like way out and we'll make LOD 3 at 1 percent okay so here we go LOD 2 we do the LOD 3 swap when the cars on the horizon and honestly without it selected I don't know if you can see that in the video but there's no way on earth you could tell that that one or two pixel tall object was not a cube and that's the whole point of LODs so right now we have a four uh, quad poly or eight tries like cube out there representing that AI car on the horizon so you could have 40 AI cars out there that are all cubes and then as they come in you know of course it'd go to the LOD2 which is still a really optimized low poly car um, I believe that's about 500 triangles that model um, and because the wheels look really low poly I would actually have probably swapped in the LOD2 a little further out maybe out about here um, so you can also preview it with your actual um, game camera so I'll zoom in and you might not even see it because I did the LODs well but there was a little bit of a pop right there to the LOD2 L or LOD1 LOD2 now and then <clears throat> um, it'll switch to the cube at some point let's see how far out we have to go there we go now it's cube and so you can see why that extremely low poly cube works at this distance it is extremely tiny and so that's how LODs work and uh, that's how they work within that's how they work in theory and this is the system that unity uses to um, create LODs so once again the models and uh, this package here and everything will be in the uh, video description for you to download and this is a pretty cool little benchmark uh, model for your mobile game project so anyway this technique is usable on everything and in AAA games and stuff it's used on everything it's used on um, AI characters on skinned characters with bones they work the same way LOD swap the same way um, it's used on buildings in the distance it's used on terrain assets um, it's used on everything it's just one of those really important optimization techniques for your project so hope this helped you guys and uh, I look forward to the next video